QR codes are one of those pieces of tech that haven't revolutionized the world, but they've certainly crept into our daily lives that they are probably more places than you realize and we use them more often than we realize. And in fact, we say, oh wow, actually QR codes are, are everywhere. For example, in the area of the world where I live in, they're very popular in restaurants. When you get to the table, you don't necessarily have a menu, although some still do, but they give you a QR code, you scan it with your phone, you get the website with their menu, it can give you the specials of the day, can tell you, you know, what's available seasonally, gives you all the latest prices rather than, you know, the printed version, which has to be updated all the time, or there's a chalkboard, you know. So that's where they get used where I am, for example, all the time. So often they're going to restaurants, scan the QR code to, to read the menu. Now, in this video, I want to look at QR codes in a technical way. We'll cover very quickly uh, what they are, the history and so on, but I want to just dive into what do all those little dots mean? Is there a format to it? Does it matter how they're made? Is there Are there different areas of that square that contain different bits of information? Is there any error correction? And so on. we're going to cover all of this. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's dive straight in. How do QR codes work? What does QR code stand for? How do you generate them? Uh, and so on. So the QR code is a two dimensional matrix barcode invented in 1994. So you can think about this 30 years ago or even more, depending on when you're watching this video. It was invented by a Japanese company, Denso Wave, for labeling uh, automobile parts. And I'm sure you've seen them. It's this kind of uh, square with those funny kind of uh, squares in the corners and then all these dots. Uh, and things like that. We're going to dive into, you know, what does that all mean? How does that all work? So unlike a barcode where the data is stored only horizontally, a QR code stores data in the pattern both horizontally and vertically, uh, and it includes error correction data, which we're going to talk more about in a minute, and it can store all kinds of things, text, URLs, phone numbers, email address, Wi-Fi network information, but basically it stores text. So for example, if you're storing a phone number, it's actually just the word tell for telephone, colon, and then the phone number. Or if it's Wi-Fi information, it says Wi-Fi colon, and then it gives you the SSID, it gives you the password and so on. So basically the QR code readers, when they see text formatted in a certain way, telephone, uh, you know, Wi-Fi, if it sees it starts with HTTP, it knows the URL, basically storing text, but text can be formatted in different ways. Now, there are different sizes of QR code. The original version one was just 21 dots by 21 dots or little black squares, and that can store up to 17 characters of UTF-8 encoded uh, text when using low uh, error correction and that's what one of those looks like there uh, not very big in fact those kind of orientation squares which we'll talk about more in a minute they almost take up more space than the actual uh, data but you can go right up to version 40 which is 177 by 177 can store nearly 3k of utf-8 uh, text and you can see there those are that's really really that's a that's actually a valid code but my phone couldn't read it on this kind of resolution that we get here in the video but that is a a genuine code that I generate as you can see very densely uh, packed generally we tend to use you know the much lower version ones version two three four just depending on how much information we want to squeeze in there now we're going to look at a bit about the structure so you understand some of the technical details about a QR code. There are different areas to it and they've all been color coded here. Uh, there's an interesting uh, research paper on this that I will link to in the description below where I borrowed this, uh, where I borrowed this image from. Uh, okay, so we're going to go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different areas of the QR code. So you may have thought there were just maybe two or three areas you could spot. There are actually eight separate areas. So let's just have a look at those. So number one, of course, is the finder pattern. That's these three squares, one in the top left, one in the top right, one in the bottom left. The reason there isn't four is because it also allows you to work out the orientation. So this is the only way that uh, those three can be orientated so that you know which is the which is the up and down and the left and right of the QR code. And these are basically three by three uh, matrix that are in this little uh, square here surrounded by another border. And it helps you determine the orientation. So the camera, if you're using a smartphone, can latch onto those uh, pretty quickly. Then you've got a separator. 
that you can see their area too to make sure that that or that finder pattern is not mixed up with the actual data so there is always that white border around those uh, squares there and then we can also see that there is a timing pattern now this is here number three and if you look at it very carefully you can see it's on off on off on off all the way across there between the top two uh, finder patterns and that allows the camera software to work out how big the pixels are because if you just started with you know two pixels or four pixels and you say well hold on which what's the size of it so this actually it can find out that and know exactly what is the size of a pixel in the image that it's captured because it's always going to be on off on 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 off across the uh, across the, the image there so that's really useful there so that's the first three parts then number four is this one down here in the middle is an alignment pattern so this is separate to the finder patterns and it helps the decoder software uh, to work out exactly how the image should be, particularly if there is some skew or some rotation, it can help that. And it helps even more so in the bigger images. In fact, the version one QR code that we saw earlier on doesn't even have that. Version two ones upwards have that extra square there in the right middle that allows it to uh, compensate for any moderate image distortions. Then number five, so that's this blue area, so that's here uh, around the top left, underneath the top right, and next to the bottom left uh, finder images are these blue encoded areas, and they're not blue on the real image, they're just the black and white pixels, but that tells it what type of information can be found inside of the QR code, including what type of error correction there is and so on. So that kind of helps define the format of this particular QR code. And then area six, which of course the biggest area, this uh, sort of mauve pink area here, purple area, is where the actual data is stored. So all this is actual data. And of course that timing image does cut across the middle of it there. Of course the QR code reader knows all that. So that's where your actual data is stored. Now number seven, this yellow area over here is the correction codes. So this is additional data, it's repeated data. We won't go into how the correction codes work too much. It's Reed Solomon, we'll talk about it in a little minute. We won't talk too much, but basically it's redundancy data. That means that if something is corrupted, either in the redundancy data or in the data itself, it can kind of compensate. And we'll talk more about this uh, in a second. And then number eight is if there's any padding that needs to be left over because not everything fits into exactly uh, blocks of eight, then you fill it in here in, in number in this area here. And it's, it doesn't mean anything. It's just padding that doesn't get used. Okay, so as I said, we'd mentioned the error corrections. The error correction is Reed Solomon codes, and they're very famous because they're used in CDs, DVDs, uh, and Blu-rays. Very, very useful system for doing uh, error correction. Now, a QR code can have four uh, levels of Reed Solomon codes in it, four levels of error correction, and that's specified in the format uh, data that's there inside the QR code. Low, 7% of the data can be restored. Medium, 15% of the data can be restored. Uh, Q, 25% of the data, and high H is 30% of the data can be restored if it's corrupted. But of course, as you add more in error correction, you leave less space for actual data. So there's a trade-off between the amount of data you want to store and the amount of uh, error correction that you want. So here is an example of low. So here on the left is our perfect image. That can be read. None of the error correction needs to be used. But here in the middle one, you see I've put a red mark. So some of those squares have been uh, corrupted by my red mark, but that can still be read with the low error correction. But it can't cope with a big, so look at this big gap, dash I've put across here in red. That error, that QR code won't read because there's too much uh, distortion. But if we go to high, here's the high on its own, can be read nicely. But look here now, I've got two quite significant red lines across here that cover quite a lot of data and that can still be read because there's enough error correction data combined with the actual data to mean that can be read. But it can't just read anything. So here I've put an extra one along the top, an extra third line and that now can't be read. So it can compensate for some uh, damage, but not for, you know, for everything. Obviously, you still have to transmit the data somehow. But the upside of that is that you can add in images right bang smack in the middle like I have here. Here's the Gary Explained logo right in the middle. And that QR code can still be read because I'm using high 
error level correction and there's enough there to compensate and read the rest of the data and actually still get out the information. You can try and scan that code if you want and it will actually work. Okay, now if you want to build your own QR codes, I mean, they are very useful. Uh, you can put them on business cards. As I said earlier on, you can use them in restaurants. You can share Wi-Fi information. If you've got, you know, guests coming to your house, they say, oh, well, what's the Wi-Fi? You can, you know, you can give them the QR code, you know, whatever you want to do with it. And there are lots of different ways to generate them. There are some applications and websites that can generate QR codes for free. Some are paid for or subscription service. I'm not affiliated with any of them in particularly. I don't particularly recommend one over another. Other. But here are two examples if you want to go and try them out uh, that will allow you to produce QR codes. And in fact, we'll go and visit one now and do a quick demo. Okay, so here we are on the second of those two websites I had in that previous slide. And this is actually based on open source software that Google uh, has released. So as you can see in here, you can type in some text so we can put, you know, hello world in there if I can spell it. And then you can pick like the size of the error correction, low, medium, high, and so on. And if you hit generate, it will generate the code for you. Uh, and you can add in more text, you know, how are you today? And then as you do that, you'll see it uses a bigger QR code to get in more of the data. And you can see here, it's actually showing you what's actually in the message there. So for example, if we change this to, for example, a phone number, then you could put a phone number in here, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, zero, zero. And then we could use this with some high error correction generate. And you can see, as I was saying, that it says tell the code, and that's the format to put it into, you know, so that the, the QR code reader knows it's a, a telephone number and there's the code it produces. There's also a uh, embedded version so that you can actually create these on the fly. And that's also true of that other website. So you can play around here, generate any QR code you want, download that image or, uh, you know, embed it, whatever you want to do uh, and start spreading information with QR codes. Okay, so there you have it, QR code. So I hope you found this video interesting. I certainly did enjoy researching it and finding out about all the different ways the, the data is stored inside of that little square. I certainly won't look at a QR code uh, in the same way uh, ever again. Now, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.